Hello and good morning people. Um, it's a bank holiday Monday so I hope everyone is um, managing to find time to wind down and chill out just before they um, get back into the swing of things. September's starting tomorrow so I hope everybody's had a good August and good summer um, and, and managed to spend time with their families and things. So really, um, I'm really delighted to be able to talk to this group. Um, I am, my name is Nogis Ahmed and I am a speech and language therapist. So I've been a speech and language therapist for um, 16 years now, quite a long time. And um, I work, I'm a paediatric speech and language therapist, so I work mainly with children. And I've worked in the NHS for 15 of those years and just, I think at the beginning of this year, it was um, just before lockdown, I um, left the NHS to do private speech and language therapy for families. And I'm based here in Nottingham, but um, I do therapy online as well. So I've got like clients from like all over the world actually, and um, all over the UK. So it's, it's, it's really great. I'm really passionate about my job. And I've, um, I've been doing a lot more kind of online stuff and online work this summer, just because I know that a lot of parents have been off at home with their children. So I wanted to share some of my knowledge of, of speech and language therapy with you guys as parents and practitioners um, to support children who aren't talking, because it's such a huge, huge topic. And um, if you're watching today, and if you watch it on replay, please feel free to say hi, because I'll be looking on the comments. I can't see who's watching, so I only know how many people are watching, but I can't see your names or anything. So it's lovely if you want to interact with me, if you want to just say, give me a quick wave or hi in the comments, it'd be, um, I'd love that. So feel free to ask me any questions about any children that you work with or any children you've got. Um, that you're thinking of in your mind that might apply to this so do feel free to use my knowledge as a speech and language therapist to help you if you've got any questions so do pop some questions down if you want or if you want put some questions if some questions come to you later then do feel free to ask and um, I'll still try and help and give you my advice even after the video is finished okay so today I want to share with you um, some kind of really a lot of kind of common strategies I tend to talk to parents about when they come to speech therapy or if even if they don't come to speech therapy but they talk to me about their child who might not be talking so these kind of this advice is useful for children who a might not be talking yet but you're worried so it can be for children who are even as young as 12 months so it can be a child who's not talking even yet and who um, you're expecting, you know, at some point you might be a little bit worried or you might be thinking, actually, so I have parents in my Facebook group who um, just have joined just to gain the knowledge of how to help children with their, how to help their child with talking so that when their child does get to that stage that they're doing all the right things, okay? Because there's a lot of things that we can just tweak just ever so slightly and change the way that we talk to our children, the way that we play, the way that we interact with our own child, that will make a huge impact in how we can encourage their communication to grow. We can encourage children's communication to flourish, actually. And, and there's only little, little, few little things that you kind of need to tweak that really create that beautiful, I'd say, communication enhancing environment. What does that mean? That means that you, the things that you create in your child's environment at home or at school or nurseries in any setting, they can encourage children to communicate. And these strategies are proven, they're research-based, and based on my 16 years experience, I see the progress that children make just when parents or practitioners in, in settings, when they tweak certain things that they do, it really does help children kind of in, come on in communication. So kind of what I wanted to share with you today are the kind of core kind of strategies that and they might sound really basic and then you might even think, oh, oh yeah, actually that makes sense. Oh, actually, and, and it might be some things that you're already doing, but I might be saying to you to do more of this. Focus more on these strategies because it's going to really encourage your children to learn words. So this, the strategies are useful for children who, A, might not be talking yet, B, they might be starting to talk, and how can you encourage more words? Or C, it might be children who are talking quite a bit but actually still need support to add more to their language. You want to expand their language, you want to um, you know, encourage more vocabulary, you want to, um, these are really useful to even build connection with your children. And it, they're also useful for children who sometimes stammer, so children who are stuttering, 
Stammer and stutter is kind of is the same thing. So children who um, stumble over their words. And these strategies are also useful for those because it creates that really nice kind of interaction between and connection between your child and you. And it, it creates that kind of comfortable kind of talking environment. And it, it does really encourage, that's the whole thing. It encourages your child to communicate without putting direct pressure on. Okay, so let me get started then. So the first thing that we say is that, you know, to see kind of, before you start doing anything really, it's so important when you sit and play with your child, the first thing that we ask you to do is, we call it following your child's lead. Okay, what does that mean? That means that often, sometimes parents come, well, often, sometimes, <laughs> contradicting myself, sometimes when parents come to me into clinic, okay, and I'm, a, a lot of the work that a speech and language therapist does is watching how a child or a, a member of school staff or nursery staff is with that child. So we watch your interaction and how you play, how you talk to your child. And I love this part of my job, okay? Because this is something that I, well, I am an expert at, but I really like doing this. I really like watching how you are with your child. And essentially speech therapists coach you into changing that interaction and play with your child so that we, I can encourage you to do the right things, okay? So one of the things, the first thing that we talk about with, your, with you and your child is Follow their lead, okay? So with this is when you sit down and play with your child, do you end up directing their play and saying to them, come on, let's do this, let's play with this, let's say you've got a train set and, and your child's got the trains and, and they're doing something with that, but then you might say, all right, let's fix them together and let's put these people in and let's try and do this. And you're actually directing their play. You're directing what's going on. And often this gets in the way and it puts a barrier for our children when we're trying to encourage language. It has got a direct impact on them learning language because what happens is that with you directing, it kind of puts them in their little bit of a, they retreat, okay? So our children end up retreating and letting you take the lead, or some might not. We have some strong and headstrong children and strong-willed children who might not let you lead, and they're still determined to take the control in play. But actually what we say is let them take the control in play. Let you follow what your child is doing. Watch what they are doing. So this really makes you kind of just sit back for a few seconds, few minutes, and really look and tune into what your child actually does with toys. What is it they're doing? Because the, this is going to be really important to help you with the next strategies. Because when you start to tune in to your child and watch what they do, you essentially start to learn what it is they're interested in because we need to use that in speech therapy. We need to use what they're interested in to help them learn words. Because if you think back, if you know any children that, um, any previous children that you had, and I'll tell you an example of my children, the first words that they learned were things that they were really, really interested in. Um, so my daughter, for example, she learned the word duck. That was one of her first words because she loved this little duck, toy little duck. She is so cute, little thing, and she loved playing with it. She played with it every day. And so that was one of her first words. And other children might say car, or might say ball. Really early first words of those around what they're interested in. So by following your child's lead, what you're starting to do is you're starting to tune into what they like. You're starting to look at what they do with the toy. You know, you, you do they put it on the track and make it go round? Do they um, like posting balls in a, you know, um, down a chute? Do they like feeding Teddy? Do they just bang things together and they don't do any pretend play? Do, does your child like go gear more towards things like sensory toys? Is your child not even interested in toys and they like pots and pans and banging those? And it's really you just tuning into your child. The next thing what I want you to do when you're tuned in and you've stopped directing your child's play and you're watching what they're into is that you are going to start, we want you to comment on what this child is doing, okay? So you start talking to the child when you're joining their play about what they're doing, okay? So you're saying to them, wow, you've got the train. So you're starting to comment on what they're doing. And the reason why this strategy is so important is because, like I said, children learn language to what they're interested in. So it's vital that what you talk about is what your child is doing. Because children need to hear the language to what their action is and what's in front of their face. Children need to hear those words. And you are their teacher. And I say it so much now, is I want you to teach your child to 
talk, talk and communicate. You are the teacher, okay? And it's so important what comes out of your mouth because what they say is, what you say is essentially what they're hearing, okay? And what they're, they're picking up their language from parents often. First person, first people that our children learn language from tend to be the ones who they spend most time with and that will be the parents or carers. Okay, so what you say and what comes out of your mouth is so essential. So it's really important you get this right. So when you watched what your child is doing, you then start to talk about what, what it is that they're doing and you're telling your child. Remember, if you're teaching, you need to be telling your child. So you say, oh, you've got the train. Oh, wow, you've got the ball. We're gonna, are oh, you throwing the ball to mummy? That kind of thing. Or you might say, oh, wow, you've got the, you're feeding Teddy. So lots and lots of little short comments about what your child is doing. So really start to comment on what your child is tuned into because also another point here is their attention is on this. Okay, their attention is on something that they're into. They, they might not necessarily look at you, they might not necessarily give you a lot back, but it's important that you are supplying that language into their brain as they are focused on something that they're really into. If you start talking about something out the window and you say, oh, look out there, da, 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 their attention isn't over there. So they're very, very less likely to learn about what you're talking about if they're not into it. Okay, if they're not looking at it, they're not focused on it, then there's almost no point even talking about those things because your child's less likely to pick up those, that, those, that language and they're less likely to remember. They're much more likely to remember if you talk about what they are doing and what they are focusing on, what they're interested in. So this is such an important kind of um, strategy. Commenting is huge. We always talk about this. Um, so yes, comment on their play. And it quite nicely leads into the third strategy that we talk about. And I go through this with my parents and through the coaching. Okay. And the next thing is to reduce your language down. Because often we, it's like, think about when you, if you, if you want to learn a new language and you go to a foreign country, you don't know the language as much, you're not so proficient in that. It's a language you're not familiar with or might be one that you're familiar with. But what helps you learn another language is when other people who are fluent in it slow down and use a little bit, little bits at a time. Because if they tell you um, in another language, or oh, so for example, if I say, um, yeah, so let me just show you. So if I say um, in German, just picking this up from school, but if I say Papier, you're like, oh, papier, paper. Yeah, okay. So I've reduced my language down and I've now told you what something is, okay? If you reduce your language down, your child is much more likely to catch what you said and remember what you said. Because we know that that strategy works for us as adults when we want to learn something. So when we want to learn a, a number, you know, we break it down, don't we? When we want to learn somebody's address or any facts and figures um, that we want to memorise, it's so important that we break it down in chunks that we can remember. And so we, if you pitch your language down to your child's level, it, that's really what I would want you to do. So thinking about kind of a bit like Goldilocks and Three Bears, what I'd want you to do is pitch your language just right. So not too less, not always at single word level, okay maybe and not too much so not like oh come on we're going to go outside we're going to go and put we're going to let's put shoes and coat on we're going to get the key, car keys and then we're going to go outside we're going to go to the park we're going to get in the car that's too much language and i'd ask you to reduce it very 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 right 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 down okay and i'd want you to say in little chunks and i'd want you to say come on we're going to go outside now going outside depends what level of language your child's at if your child is not talking I'd probably want you to do lots and lots of single word stuff, but also I'd want you to use short sentences. Okay, so things like, oh, you've got a ball, oh, it's a ball, oh, you're eating, eating, eating grapes, very short sentences. If your language is, if your child's language is a bit more, okay, it may maybe pitch it a bit, you can say a little bit more. So think about if they can, if they use two words together. So let's say your child says things like, mummy gone, or, um, want ball or something like that so if they're using two words together and they say things like oh no baby sleep so let's say they talk like that then i'd ask you to pitch your language just a little bit above that so i'd ask you to say three words so you can say oh look baby sleeping in the bed so a little bit more so three to four words so but the key thing here is to reduce your language down so that your child has got that opportunity to really 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 um remember what you said 
and be able to recall it, okay? And they, they really need to learn these words to teach them the language. We need to make it kind of appropriate for their age level and not just the age level, whatever language level they're at. Um, it's really, really important. And, and yeah, and then another thing I'd want you to do, so this is gonna, I'm going to lead you on to the fourth strategy. Fourth strategy is, I say this so many times to my parents, is don't ask your child to say things. Because, well, if, you're, if I've just told you that I need you to take the role as a teacher, then when we ask a question, that ends up being a role of, as a test tester. Okay, we know that teachers do ask questions. We know that teaching, when you're learning something, you get an exam, you get some questions or a test. We don't need to do that with our child much. Only when they might go to an appointment with a professional like me, like a speech therapist, that's when I'm going to be asking the questions and that's when you might want to know at certain points in kind of your child's life, kind of like what they know and how much they know. Do they understand these words? Do they, not, do they respond to these instructions? But actually, if you are going to take the role of the teacher... I don't want you to test. So I want to teach, not test. Testing is when you're asking your child, what's this? What's that? Oh, what's this? And you think that, you you know, all in goodwill, that you're showing something to your child and you're teaching them. But actually, you're asking them to say, oh, what's this? What is it? And But your child doesn't know the word pen, yeah? Or marker pen or something like that. But your child doesn't know the word pen. So what's the point in saying that? Why not turn it around and tell them what it is? It's a pen. Mommy's got a pen. Isn't that better? So I'd ask you as parents not to ask your children all the time and don't ask them to say it as well. So again, don't tell him or her to say, say pen. Look, it's a pen. I'm telling you it's a pen, so I'm teaching you. And I'm what, now I want you to say it. Pen, say pen. We don't ask children to say, repeat after us, unless maybe they have a diagnosis of autism, we're, we're working on um, sentence scripting and things like that, that we might ask the child to repeat after us. But most of the strategies in speech therapy, we ask, we do take the pressure off your child. By asking a question and saying to them, what is this, and say this, that's a direct demand on a child. And and often it's not teaching them it puts a pressure on them it retreats children retreat you should you maybe observe this because often when you when parents do this the child doesn't respond they don't and that's not why you're in it anyway you're in it to help your child to learn okay we're in it to help them to learn take away those questions and really go in and you can and you can change a question if you think oh, actually i've asked a question there you can change it around very quickly. So often when I ask parents to come and join in their child's play, and they say, and they'll, um, they'll join in, and it kind of is quiet, and it's a bit maybe uncomfortable and thinking that they need to start a conversation with the child. And they might start saying, oh, what have you got there? And what are you doing? Oh, the question, see? If you've done that, you can quickly turn the question into an answer. All right? And tell them. You can turn it into a comment. So if you say, what are you doing? Oh, you're playing with the trains. You've got the trains. Oh, where's the train going? The train's going around the track. So answer your own question because the question's not going to help your child, but the answer is going to help your child. They're going to learn how to answer questions if you answer it. I'm not then saying ask questions and then answer them. What I'm saying is if you have managed to ask questions, you can quickly turn that opportunity into a teaching opportunity and put a comment in instead and answer it, okay? And often, it's interesting when I do this in speech therapy because um, parents don't realise, and, and I still remember some parents that we've done this with, and they're like, oh, that was a question, I just asked a question, didn't I? Or, or, or I just asked a question there. And they're like, oh no. And sometimes in speech therapy, I record parents playing with their child, and we watch it back together as a bit of a feedback and say, well, what do you notice? And they'll be like, oh, I was asking questions, weren't I? Or sometimes they, do, or sometimes they miss it, um, but it is a good one. It really is a good strategy. And a, and a couple of parents on my Facebook group have said that they've stopped doing a lot of that and now they're doing more commenting and they've really noticed their children's language take off. Um, so if your child is a bit delayed, this is going to be a really, really important one. If your child has more higher special needs, um, yeah, that, you know, they're not going to make maybe it's, uh, progress as quickly. But questioning is still going to be supportive for any child, no matter what language or communication difficulty they have. The questions just really do put, put pressure on our children. And it's speech therapy is all about indirect and indirect kind of signals that we send children, really comfortable messages, really positive messages, and lots of praise 
and supportive, helping our children learn language and build about those kind of foundations to learning language. Okay, so another big, big, big thing, so this is point five, is again, if you, when we teach, a lot of us who, who are teaching children at home, uh, a lot of teachers will know this, is repeat the things that you say. Okay, so repeating a concept. When we learn, we often need to repeat words so that we or number. Let's say you're memorizing a number, you're going to repeat it, repeat, repeat. Keep this number in my head. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. And we need to do the same thing to help our children learn words. So, if you repeat key words during the day, through the week, your child has got a much more better um, chance of picking up words. Rather than hearing a word once, they need to hear words lots and lots of times. And this is hugely kind of um, part of like lots of um, language programs, it's research, you know, they've got research on this, shows the success of this, just strategy of if you repeat things often enough, children will have, they will, are much, much more likely going to be learning and developing their language skills and communicating skills in general. So let's say your child um, loves to play with, again, if you look back to all the other strategies I talked about, if you're following the lead, then you realise your child likes, for example, balloons and bubbles. Let's say they love those. You're going to be playing them every day because they love them. You're going to be saying them every day. So your child has got that chance, much more likely chance of being learning the words bubbles and balloons because they love them. You say them every day. You say them five times a day. The more you can get these words into your day, the better chance your child has of learning. So I know you might feel like some parents are like, oh, I feel a bit like a robot. But actually, you know what? Just put the words in as much as naturally as you can through it, throughout your play. If you like, if your child likes, for example, animals, get a book on animals, get the animal toys. They might watch animals on TV. Um, you might want to play animal role playing games. Incorporate it into your day as much as possible in lots and lots of different ways because that then you, you are really consolidating that skill. You're really cementing those words into your child's brain and your child has got much, much more better kind of better chance really of learning those words. And it's gonna help. It really will. I'm telling you it will. Um my last thing, I think there are so many strategies, right? And I and I've and I'm, I'd be happy to um post I've got a ten speech therapy tips guide um, on a document I created, so I've got, um, and I'll, I'll pop that link on if anybody wants to download it, you are absolutely welcome to free. Um, so I put that together uh, a few months ago. So I've got these in there and explain these, but also I've got more. So I'll talk about from, I was thinking what can be the sixth strategy that I'd tell you about. Um, and if it's for children who aren't talking yet or are talking a little bit and you want to help them improve, and for children who might be, who might have autism, who might be non-verbal, I'm going to choose be visual, okay? So be as visual as possible for your children who are going to be learning language. Meaning, if you're going to say pen, show them pen, okay? If you're going to say drink, show them drink or mug or cup. You need to tell, you need to show your child what you say. By being visual, by showing something and saying it, your child, and I always say this, people will hear me all the time saying this, your child's getting two messages into the brain, okay? You, you, they're twice as more likely now to be learning words. Why? Because they are hearing that you said cop and they are now seeing, the brain is seeing the word cop. They're making that correlation between the word and the object. The brain's getting two bits of information. It's being fed twice. Okay, so they're doubly kind of likely to remember the word, to remember what you said. To follow that instruction is so important for children who have problems with receptive language difficulties, meaning, what does receptive language difficulty mean? Children who struggle with understanding, so children who might understand, struggle to follow instructions, children who don't respond to instructions consistently, children who, uh, yeah, struggle to understand the environment, the world, those children. Um, it's really, really a useful um, technique and, and, and a strategy that we talk about is being visual, so showing your child. And there's lots of different ways in showing your child. You can show your child the real object, Oh, I didn't have these prepared, but you can show your child, I, have, oh, I think I had a picture here. You, show, you can show your child the real object, that's one thing. You can show your child a photograph of the object. So, so look, cutting, paper, so you can show them what you mean. So let's do some cutting, and you want to show them. 
And then you can also show them through your own action. You can use hand signals, you can use signing. We promote um, marketing signing, not BSL or anything else like that. That's for children who have hearing impairment, complete, like profound, moderate to profound hearing impairment. But children with language delays or children who have English as a second language, this is really good as well, is you, you know, signing is really, really good. And there's lots of research to show with sign language when you say drink, um, going to eat, things like that. Um, support again remember it's that visual and the what they're hearing so it's that making that connection and often if you if they sign there's research to show that the language part of the brain is activated when you do a gesture or when they watch somebody do, doing a gesture with signing so it actually helps them children to learn language and often when you sh and when i say show visuals you don't it doesn't replace the words that you're saying it doesn't replace speech you don't just say you actually, you don't say nothing and just show them. You say cutting. We're going to do cutting. So you always speak and show what you what you want your child to learn. Um, another way you can do it is I'm just improvising now. I didn't prepare this. Oh, here's some here's some old ones. I've, this is like these are symbols, okay? But you can do your own. Um, some of them are rubbed off a bit, but you can if you say to your child, um, you know, if you haven't got your picture to hand and you haven't got um, anything with you but you've got a whiteboard and marker because you're teaching your child and stuff at home then you can easily just like draw and say right we're gonna we're going home now and you know I'm rubbish at drawing guys but so what does it matter so we're going home so you can do that or if you're out and about using my scarf so bad um, so let's say you're at the park right and then you might want to go Here's another example. So let's say I'm at the park and we're going to do some swing, just to swing. Okay. Here's a good one. So, oh, park's finished. We're going home. So, you, you can, but be visual. I'm, I'm just saying it's, it's just, it just helps support the language that you want your child to learn. It helps them to understand what you're telling them to do. It helps them to follow that, that instruction. It it just gives them a much better opportunity of, of learning language. So I think that's my sixth tip for you guys. Um, there are loads more, okay? But these are the core ones that I tend to talk about with most, like, say 90%, maybe higher, um, of clients that I work with, people that I might talk to if they want general advice for the child who's not talking who, or who's talking less. These are the ones that I talk about with you and these are the things that you can change today with your child at home and start to tweak and start to change and and watch it normally you i mean you won't see an instant change but you might you might yeah i've seen it sometimes but often you need to give your child when you change when you're changing these kind of ways in the way that you are interacting with your child when you are using new strategies with your children here's an, another really really important point i want to make is do give it time and be patient okay so give it time it's almost like you're sowing the seeds and you need to give it time for these flowers to grow for these plants to grow from these seeds that you sowed because when you plant a seed it takes a bit of time doesn't it we need to nurture it we need to water it we need to it needs sun it needs light by doing this the strategies regularly every day consistently every day but not stressing over it not showing anxiety but just doing it naturally through play doing it naturally when you go out and um, talk using these changing the way that you talk and and really following your child's lead reducing your language repeat 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 and and really showing an interest in your child in this way then you will see these the fruits of your labor start to take effect and, and normally it can be kind of within weeks it can be within a couple of months it might take a little bit longer but it's it's about being patient giving it time but but giving it but being knowing that these are the these are the strategies that can help not the other things not things like asking your child to say things and really putting pressure on them take that off and you will see the difference so Yep, my video's coming to half an hour now. Um, I thank you guys for watching. I've got um, people who said thank you in the comments. And if you've got any questions for your children, do pop them in now or later on. Um, I'll be happy to answer them. I have got a free Facebook group for parents or um, professionals, practitioners to come and join. And if, they want, if you want to learn any more things about speech therapy, I've got lots more um, ideas. I've got lots more, um, lots more of my knowledge that I share on my group and it's all free. So you are welcome to join that. So if um, 
Mrs. Army could put a link to my group, that'd be amazing. And it's called Young Talkers SOS, so it's helping children with communication. You're absolutely welcome to join. Anybody's welcome to join. It's to help you learn, and, and it's free. I want to just share my knowledge with you. So I hope that people have taken away some good stuff from my video today. And um, yeah, if you've got any questions, do ask me. Feel free to message me, and jo do join my group. And I'll also give you the download as well that you can that you're welcome to have and keep. Um, but yeah, good luck with your children. If, if anybody's has got any children that are struggling with talking or knows anybody in the family that's struggling with talking, please do feel free to give them the advice that I've talked with you today. So thank you for having me and take care. Um, Salam alaikum for those um, who are watching. And yeah, thanks for having me. Bye.